Welcome back folks. This is section 4 of downloading a SPICE model off the internet and then loading that into Hyperlinks Analog. Now unfortunately this is the second time I'm shooting section 4 and it's not because it didn't work. It's because the first time I recorded this the resulting video was 11 minutes and 28 seconds long and the biggest you can upload to YouTube is 10 minutes so we'll do this again. So in the first section we downloaded the SPICE model and we loaded it into Hyperlinks Analog. In section 2 we uh, customized the automatically generated symbol when we instantiated that SPICE model into the schematic and that's how we got this nice looking op amp. Section 3 we created this basic circuit so now in section 4 we'll go ahead and define our stimulus and then we'll go ahead and run the simulation. So create our net list and then define our sources. So as I said, unfortunately we've already done this once and uh, now I need to do it again. Alright, so new we need a DC positive voltage so we'll go ahead and define that between nodes DC positive and ground and then 15 volts for the value a new source DC negative of course these are just the rail voltages to the op amp this will be minus 15 and now we need our input signals we have three input signals three waveforms so let's call it wave one connect that to signal one and ground now let's make this a sine wave since this is a summing amplifier I'd like to see some analog addition going on so in this case let's make the amplitude 6 for the frequency of 30 and then delay and dampening at 0 so that will be our first waveform our second waveform we'll go to the signal 2 and ground uh, another sine wave. This time let's set the amplitude to 8 volts, frequency of 45 hertz, delay again 0, and damping factor 0. And then our final waveform, wave 3. Connected to signal 3 and ground. Again, a sine wave. Now set our amplitude on this one to 2 volts, frequency of 50 hertz, delay 0, damping 0. Alright, so those are all of our sources defined. And you'll notice we didn't put the sources as schematic symbols because this schematic is ready to go, ready to rock with PCB layout. So we haven't corrupted that. Now what we need to do is set up our time domain analysis. Now since we've already done this before and you didn't get to see it because it was too long, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you a little bit about um, the ability to manage different simulation control experiments. So I'm going to call this test 2. And then we'll... Whoops. I shouldn't have hit return there. Put the time domain analysis. A test 2, the time domain. Um, I've already set this up, so we're going to run it for one second, which in Spice World is actually pretty long. Uh, most simulators don't have the capacity and performance of Hyperlinks Analog. And again, this is running with the internal simulation engine, not the upgraded Eldo simulation engine, which is much faster. And let's take a look at our output signal and our different input signals. So you notice I just double clicked on these and it added them automatically to the list. So there's our summing waveform. One of the things I want to point out is, let's get some cursors on this thing. So you'll see here we've got a positive voltage on signal 3, a positive voltage on signal 2 and a uh, sl slightly negative voltage on signal 1. But we have a massively negative voltage on 
uh, the output waveform. And that's because what we built is a inverting summing amplifier. So let's just look at how we configured that off amp. And yeah, we're driving the sum node into the negative terminal of the output. So that's what's going on there. And this is how I got into trouble in the in the first uh, cut, the first uh, edit of this, is that I really like Easy Wave and the waveform viewing and analysis. So I tend to spend too much time in here, and it makes the video too long. Now it's interesting. We had a little bit of clipping going on here, and that's because our voltage values must have added up to too high a value. So let's zoom in around there. You'll notice I just dragged and dropped and stacked those waveforms all together so you could see them all at once. And so what do we've got here? Yeah, we've got minus 8, minus 5, so that's that. That's minus uh, 13 plus minus 2, so that's minus 15. So yeah, we exceeded the rail voltage in terms of the clipping, and we clipped out right there. So we could modify our input to be more in line. But that really wasn't the point. The point was to show that um, this amplifier, the output, is adding up all of the inputs and then inverting it as we work through the waveform. So thank you. And uh, one other point I would like to make is that you can uncombine the waveforms yeah, as easy as dragging and dropping. And of course, if you want... Uh, new waveform window you can do that you have as many waveform windows as you want if you want to mix current and voltage together you can do that and you get two axes so there's a lot of cool capabilities in easy wave make sure you check it out thanks